What's going on, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called 5-Minute Review. Today's topic is the pharmacotherapy of glaucoma. Ophthalmology, baby. In previous videos in this playlist, we have talked about meconium aspiration syndrome, transient tachypnea of the newborn, neonatal conjunctivitis, Barrett's esophagus, cerebral palsy, and others. Now, let's get started. When I ask a doofus medical student to define glaucoma, they usually say, oh, glaucoma is just increased intraocular pressure. Close the window on this nonsense. No, glaucoma is degenerative optic neuropathy. It could coexist with a high intraocular pressure or with a normal intraocular pressure. Just think about that. Wrap your head around this. Glaucoma is defined based on the problem in the optic nerve, not the problem in the pressure. That's number one. Number two, glaucoma is one of the most common causes of blindness. Number three, most cases of glaucoma are open angle glaucoma and not closed angle glaucoma. Number four, open angle glaucoma is usually chronic, but closed or narrow angle glaucoma is usually acute. In advanced cases of glaucoma, there is increased cupping or cup to disc ratio. Think of a cup on a saucer, same thing here. The inner part is called the cup, the outer part is called the disc. And in glaucoma, you see increased cup to disc ratio. As you know, the aqueous humor is in front of the lens, vitreous humor is behind the lens. This is more liquidy, this is more solid. Who makes the aqueous humor? The epithelium of the ciliary body. This epithelium is partly pigmented, the other part is non-pigmented. My favorite kinds of questions. Where does your saliva come from? Where does your urine come from? Where does your earwax come from? Where does your sweat come from? Where do your precious crocodile tears come from? Where does your aqueous humor come from? The answer to all of these questions is the blood, especially from the plasma. All of these bodily secretions are ultra filtrations of the plasma. Here is the blood vessel which contains blood, no kidding. Blood is made of blood cells and plasma. When the plasma is filtered, the plasma can leak out of the vessel, but the blood cells cannot leak out. When the plasma leaks out, it's gonna go to a gland. This is an exocrine gland made of an acinus and a duct. The acinus is gonna modify the plasma, and now this will be secreted. This is the mechanism of making saliva. It's the mechanism of making tears. It's the mechanism of making the aqueous humor. So the aqueous humor came from your plasma. Here is the epithelium of your ciliary body, okay? There is some blood vessels next to it. Okay, I'll take the plasma, modify it, make it into aqueous humor, and boom, secrete that aqueous humor. Here, okay, this is the anterior chamber. Aqueous humor will pass around the iris, and then it goes here to the angle the iridocorneal angle because it's between the iris and the cornea. This angle will help drain the aqueous humor. Okay, so who makes the aqueous humor? Epithelium of the ciliary body. Who drains the aqueous humor? The iridocorneal angle. Adam is from the earth. Adam is gonna return back to the earth. Same thing, aqueous humor is from the blood. It's gonna go back to the blood. In this case, venous blood. Same thing for your cerebrospinal fluid. It came from the blood, it's gonna return back to the blood. What happens in narrow angle or closed angle glaucoma? The iris went crazy. The iris is gonna tilt backwards until it hugs the lens. Now look at this. Oh, this gets, it's getting narrower. So it's harder for me to drain my aqueous humor. Moreover, when the iris went crazy, it also clogged the iridocorneal angle. Now it's very hard for me to drain my aqueous humor. Aqueous humor secretion did not change, but the drainage decreased. The result is accumulation of aqueous humor in the anterior chamber. This will increase your intraocular pressure, and since your eye is one ball, it's gonna damage your optic nerve. Degenerative optic neuropathy is the definition of glaucoma. Aqueous humor is from the plasma. We have pigmented epithelium and non-pigmented epithelium in the ciliary body epithelium. And we make the aqueous humor and we secrete it. 
and then we drain it into the angle, I read a corneal angle. So if I have increased intraocular pressure, how can we reverse this or prevent it or decrease it? Easy. First of all, what's the source of the acus humor? Ah, oh, the blood. So it came from the blood. What if we can constrict this blood vessel? Oh, when you constrict the blood vessel, you will decrease the diameter, you will decrease the blood flow. I said flow, I didn't say velocity, okay, pay attention. When you constrict the vessel, blood flow is gonna decrease, therefore the formation of aqueous humor will decrease, which will decrease my intraocular pressure. Thank you. So give me alpha-1 agonist because it's a vasoconstrictor. Amazing. Next, who makes the aqueous humor? The epithelium of the ciliary body. All right, what receptor? Beta, usually beta-1 receptor. Oh, so if you give me a freaking beta blocker, you will block the secretion of the aqueous humor, which will decrease my intraocular pressure. Problem solved. Amazing. Can you make my angle wider? Yeah. If I give you an agonist of the prostaglandin F2-alpha or the alpha-2, when you widen the angle, you decrease the intraocular pressure. The beta receptor is responsible for gazillion things. One of them is increased aqueous humor secretion. Therefore, if I have glaucoma, give me a beta blocker such as timolol. If the beta receptor is making mo more aqueous humor, give me a beta blocker. That's easy. But you can also inhibit the stimulation of the beta receptor by decreasing norepinephrine release. How can you do this? If you give me an alpha-2 agonist, because alpha-2 is anti-sympathetic, alpha-2 will decrease norepinephrine release. So give me an alpha-2 agonist, to decrease norepinephrine release, to decrease the stimulation of beta-1 receptor, to decrease the formation of aqueous humor. Remember when we said before, alpha-1 is prosympathetic, more norepinephrine, alpha-2 is antisympathetic, less norepinephrine. So if I have glaucoma, give me an alpha-2 agonist, but a beta antagonist. Next, do you remember the story of the proximal convoluted tubule? Yes, it's responsible for reabsorbing sodium and water. When you reabsorb sodium and water, you will increase my systemic blood pressure, which may increase my intraocular pressure because they are all connected. Because I have one pump called the heart. So let's inhibit the proximal convoluted tubule. Sure, give me a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, such as acetazolamide or dorsolamide. So if I have glaucoma, give me an alpha-1 agonist to constrict the vessel, alpha-2 agonist and beta antagonist to block the formation of aqueous humor. Give me prostaglandin F2 alpha agonist and alpha-2 agonist to dilate the angle and give me a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor to decrease aqueous humor secretion. Last, you know this muscle? Yep, it's under parasympathetic stimulation via muscarinic receptors. Because remember that your parasympathetic nervous system, aka the oculomotor nerve, was responsible for constricting the pupil and supplying your ciliary body and ciliary muscle. So the parasympathetic wants to constrict my pupil. So this pupil will go this way, this way, this way, this way, and it will leave the angle alone. Now the angle is open to drain the aqueous humor because glaucoma, especially the narrow angle glaucoma, happens when the pupil is mid-dilated. So let me constrict it for you. When it's constricted, it's not dilated. When it's constricted, the angle is free. So here is the pharmacological therapy for glaucoma. Pause and review. If you want to learn more about the serotonin receptors, the prostaglandin subtypes, the cyclic AMP, and GI pharmacology, check out my Udacoids pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you want to learn more about sympathetic and parasympathetic, I have an autonomic pharmacology course. And if you want to learn about renal pharmacology, it's in my cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.